Welcome to Code with Kurt, the channel that brings you the latest Google Sheets and Google Apps Script videos. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a time log. Basically, you can record a job and a note and then a start date and an end date. Basically, a start time or end time. So I'll go through it real quick. So you can select your job. I just put three easy ones here. Say I was driving. I'll leave a note in the morning and then I could select my date which is today and we're gonna go 8 a.m. and then I could select down here time till 9 a.m. Like that and then I could add my time to log again here I'm using this where you can log in to a web app by using your Google account so here I'm automatically since I came onto this web app I'm logged in as my email address now recorded my record if I go to the sheet here is posted I get my first name last name start date end time start time end time total hours the job the note and the date that it was recorded with this I have a list of the employees I got one right here this is the only one that's allowed to do it this is how I'm pulling the first name and last name with the email address being logged in and then I also have a list of jobs through my Google Sheets now I'm using this where you log into the web app so the person that can only do this record a record is the person that is shared to the sheet so here I am an editor here if I switch this to viewer or I just remove it it's not going to let me record anything to the sheet anymore so I could go back to my web app back here I could do this again add another one waiting say I want to say from 9 a.m. and I'm going to go to 10 10 a.m. I can add it now I'll get an error that I don't have permissions to add to the sheet so this is a way that you can control who can log stuff to your Google sheet using this web app and again it's using the person that's logged into your web app using its email so I'll give you a step-by-step -step process of how I put this together if you're new to this channel subscribe to catch my latest videos let's get started with this video here I'm on my new Google spreadsheet. I have it called Time Log Web App. And on my first sheet here I got Time Sheet. I got it named Time Sheet. And then my header record is first name, last name, start time, end time, total hours, job, note, and record date. Just the header record, no formulas, no other data here. I can go over to my employee sheet that I have set up. I have a redder, header record of first name, last name, and email. And then I just have one record here a first name, last name, and then the email address there. And then for jobs, I have a header record of job. And then I have driving, waiting, and lunch. And you can continually add them down and it'll grab them all. So if you have a lot more, you can add them down. Same with employees, if you have a lot here there you just add them on but whoever you add on make sure you allow them give them share permissions to edit the sheet and that will allow them to log stuff on the timesheet here if you don't do the share here they won't be able to allow and then they'll get that error that comes through on the web app so let's go to our google app script let's go to extensions app script First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a name, hit rename here, and then next I'm going to copy in my Google Apps script code. So there I have it copied. I'm going to hit save. Next I'm going to create my HTML file. I'm going to call it index, the same name that's right here. I'm going to use a capital I. There. I got that called index. Next, I'm going to copy in my HTML code. So there I have it copied. I will post this code in a link in the description of the video. 
so you can just go follow the link and you can get this code here next I'm gonna go through the code and explain how it works so I'm on my code GS file here uh, the first function I have is a do get and this is what kicks off the web app here so the first thing I'm doing in this do get is I'm gonna call the get the user email using the session get active user get email so I'm gonna get the name of the person that's logged into the web app the Google account email address next I'm gonna call my HTML file called index over here using the HTML service create template from file this call and here I got my object and then I'm gonna add pass a parameter of email into this page as I'm calling it and I'm gonna pass this email I'm grabbing up here and then the last thing is the evaluate so this is what's gonna render the index file HTML so then that's gonna pull up the web app so let's go to our index file so here I'm on my HTML file. I got my HTML tag, header tag, and then I'm calling um, several JS jQuery files here. And this is so to do the, the date picking, basically the date and time picking. So you need all these for all that to work. So some of these are bootstrap, some are date time pickers, some are other libraries, jQuery libraries and all this. Again, this is in the, the code here, so you can copy and paste it. This is all coming from the Cloudflare website, and I could put a link to their site as well, to where you can go reference or find it there as well. So then after that, I have my own JavaScript code here. I'm going to skip through. I'm going to go down to the rest of the HTML. So this is, that script is ending there. I'm ending my header tag now. I'm starting my body, and this is bootstrap HTML here. So I'm starting with time long header tag here. I'm showing who is logged in, and I'm using these uh, commands here, and this will pass in that parameter to display it here using these tags here. And that works with when I use the create template from file this call here then I can use those tags into my HTML to pass to display these parameters so again email there and then from there I'm setting up my form of job note start date and end date so my four fields on those I'm using a, uh, a select here so I'm pulling in the list of jobs I have from the Google Sheets for the note I'm using text area so you can put a, a lot of notes in there and then the start time I'm just using the input input fields here for that the start date and end date or which will be the start time and end time and then I do have a button down here it says add time log down here and uh, that's going to call a JavaScript record of add a JavaScript function of add record and then with that, as it continues down here, I do call a script here that begins. So once this is all rendered up, these are the first three that calls. First, I'm going to call get jobs right here. So I go up here, find that function of get jobs, which is right here, this function. Here I'm calling a Google Apps script function here. This is the standard way of calling it through JavaScript and then with that the finishing tag is where you put your Google Apps Script code that you want to call so I'm going to be calling get jobs down here on the bottom so this is basically one call right here so I'm going to go get jobs over here right here this function get jobs I'm going to call the active spreadsheet SS will be my object for that. Then I'm going to call the jobs sheet here. And then from that, I'm going to be getting the data range, basically every, every section that's populated, and I'm going to be getting the values. And then from here, I'm going to declare with headers and then with the rest of it being the data. So what this does is it breaks it down. I'll go over here to the jobs. 
So here I have the jobs I have four records. The headers is going to take the job, the first row, and then data is going to take the next three. Or how many ever you got populated down, it'll take the rest. So data is only the part I really want to look at here. I'm not concerned about the headers, but this is a quick and easy way to break that apart. Here I'm going to return the data. So this is going to return back an array. So I'm going to go back to my HTML. That array is going to come out as an AR up here. Next I'm going to be declaring my select statement of job, which is down here. The select, I'm going to be populating the options into this select. So then I got a console log, which is used for debugging through the browser. I'm setting up my first option object. I'm going to be, the first one I'm going to set up is being blank. And I'm going to pin that to the job. So that's going to be my first selection. The next selection is my AR, my, my array that's coming back. I'm going to go through each one of the array. And with that array, I got the item and the index. So I'm most concerned about the item here. So I'm going to use that. Again, setting up a new option object. And then with that, I'm going to be adding the value in the text, which will be the job name. So it will be 0 and 0, which that one. So when it comes back, it's doing a multi-dimensional array. So each row is its own array, and then each choice is array. So it, it's going through the list, and then the first one in the array, there's only one in the array, so it will be 0. So I'm putting the name as the value in the text for each and then appending that in. So that completes my select statement for the job. The next thing I'm doing is I'm calling these jQuery commands up here of date time picker. So this just in initiates this input field so you when you click on it, it'll pop up that box with the calendar and date on it to pick. And I'm doing that for both start date and end date there. So the next thing I'm doing is calling add record. After I get the whole, all the fields populated, I'm going to call add record. So that is up here, this function. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm clearing out my display. Now the display is if the record has been added or if there's an error. So this is where I put my error at right here. So I'm going to clear it out between each run. So I get the fresh message back saying if it was successful or not. So I got that coming, I clear that out first, then I grab the job note start date and end date. I make sure job start date and end date are populated and if they're not populated I will add into the display not all fields filled out as like a error message here. So you'll see that on the screen next to the button. If they are populated, then I'm going to call add. I'm going to call this Google Script Run Success Handler. I got a success handler and a failure handler. So if it's successful, it's going to run a different function. If it's a failure, it's going to run the on failure function. And then at the end, again, I'm calling this is the app script function that I'm calling. So I'm going to be passing job, note, start date, and end date. So over here I got my add record, I'm passing job note, start date, and end date. Again, I'm grabbing the email in which the user is logged in on this web app. I'm using the SS for the spreadsheet object of this spreadsheet. I'm grabbing the employees sheet, and then I'm going to, I'm grabbing all the employees into an array here. Again, I'm splitting the headers and the data. And I'm most focused on the data. And then with this, what I'm doing is I'm going through each one of the employees and I'm going to grab the first name and last name of the email address that I'm using so I could populate it on my timesheet. So I'm going through, once I find the email that I'm looking for, I'm going to take the first name and last name off the array and I'm going to break out of it. Once I find it, I'm going to break out of it. I got my first name and last name, so I'm going to come down here, setting my timesheet object, 
And then from there, I'm going to get the last row plus one. I'm going to grab the, the, the next open row here. And what I'm doing there is from my timesheet object, I'm going to pin to row. So the next open spot, that's what a pinned row does. It's going to populate that. So again, I'm populating first name, last name, start date, end date. And then for my hours total here, I'm going to use a sheet function here. I'm starting out with round and then I'm doing my range here. So D the next row. So I need to find the row that I'm populating at. So that's this number here. So I'm putting, say this is going to be the first row that I'm populating. It'll be D1 minus C1 times 24. And that's going to give me the hours. And then I'm rounding that by two. So I'll round up to the nearest basically whole number there. Now give me hours. Or not to the nearest whole number, the next two decimal places basically. So then with that I'm doing the job, the note, and the date, the current date that I'm populating at. And if all that is successful, I'm going to return record edit here. So then it takes me back to my HTML page. Me, if it's success, it's going to go up here. It's going to clear all my fields out and then set that message of record was added. If it was a failure, it's going to start with an error and then give out, give out whatever the standard error message is. So in the case that I showed in the beginning of the video, if the user does not have permissions to add, that's when this error will come out on this one. So that explains everything on the code side. Next, I'm going to deploy my web app. So I'm going to hit deploy, new deployment. I'm going to select the settings here. I'm going to click web app. I'm going to put prod. I'm going to change this execute as using user accessing the web app. So it's going to use the user's permissions. And then I'm going to change this to anyone who has a Google account. These are the two things that are important to get this set up with the email that's being logged in. So I got this set. I'm going to hit deploy. So I'm going to click on the URL here. It's going to take me up here. So this is what a user will see the first time they log in. So then they'll have to review the permissions. So I'm going to select the account, advanced. Go down here and then allow. So now my web app comes up. I'm logged in. Now I can select what I'm doing. Go and then I could add add time log. Record edit. I could go back to my Google Sheet. My timesheet and there I have it. So I started a.m. to 10 a.m. two hours driving test and the date I did it on. So that concludes this video. If you have any questions or comments please leave it below the video. Until next time.